from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes, it shall be so. Amen, amen. Truly, truly, I say to you, this is going to hurt. The truth hurts. Actually, the truth kills. The truth kills those who hear it, but the truth also kills those who speak it. It is certainly the case with St. Stephen. As he stood before his hearers and proclaimed to them the truth to their face, calling them out, you stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. Stephen proclaims the law and puts to death his audience. And the truth is, we are Stephen's audience. We are those stiff-necked people. We are those stubborn, set-in-our-ways, resistant-to-change people. We are those who resist the change and the call of the Holy Spirit to repentance and faith. We would rather not do it. We are those who resist the good works that the Holy Spirit puts before us to work and to do through us for our neighbor. We say, after all, we are saved by faith, not by works. What do I have to do works for? We would rather not hear the Word of God. We would rather be content with the desires and things of our heart that if we could just do whatever we wanted, life would be so much better and easier for us rather than trying to hear this truth which kills. The truth kills its hearers, and the truth kills those who speak it. The truth killed Stephen as he proclaimed the law and gospel to the people of Jerusalem. The truth, as it killed Stephen, killed those who had come before him. All the prophets that had gone before him who were martyred were killed for the truth. Stephen was killed for the truth. And this should come no t to no surprise to Stephen or us as Jesus himself, the way the truth and the life was put to death for the truth. And of course, if the prophets and apostles and Stephen and even Jesus himself is put to death for the truth, then we should expect it to do no less when we speak it to our neighbors. We should expect no less persecution, no less hatred of ourselves when we tell them the truth. Whether we are speaking God's law in truth and love, or if we are speaking God's gospel, that there is forgiveness of sins in the cross by the grace and gift of God for you, you will be hated for that truth. Your friends, your classmates, your co-workers will hate you. Perhaps your very own family, even those in your very own church will hate you for telling the truth. And as we stand in the truth and proclaim it as our friends, family, co-workers, and those closest and nearest and dearest to us turn their backs on us and hate us, for the things that the God's Word says, we look up to heaven as Stephen de does and say, How long, O Lord, will I have to put up with these stiff-necked people? How long will I have to suffer? How long will I be hated? For Stephen, he got his answer. The heavens opened, the sky split, the clouds were parted, and God said, No longer Come to me, my child. While Stephen got such a clear answer, you probably will not. 
As you pray, how long, O Lord, and look above, the heavens probably will not part. The clouds will probably not separate. But as you look up and look around, there is still a cloud. As you look around you, even this day, you see so great a cloud of witnesses to the truth who proclaim with you that truth. The thousand of us who have gathered here even this day, the thousands of youth and their chaperones that have gathered over the course of this month at Higher Things conferences. Perhaps the thousand that will gather with you on Sunday, or maybe just the hundred, or maybe just the tens that will gather to confess the truth of the Word of God. They, and each one of you, individually, is a witness, a witness to the truth, a witness who stands beneath the altar, beneath that place of sacrifice of God, that place where to God is offered up the most pleasing thing in His very own Son. Here we stand. Here you stand beneath the altar, beneath the sacrifice, beneath the cross of Christ for you. There you are covered, you are protected, you are guarded by nothing less than the death of God for you, even if you're hated for it. In the cross, you are covered by God for the forgiveness of of all of your sins. By the cross, you are rescued from your sin, from your stiff-necked, uncircumcised ears. You are saved from the grave, and that same truth that puts you to death gives to you life. For from the cross, from the sacrifice of God, from His altar comes water and blood. That water which is washed on you in your holy baptism, where your sins are washed away, where you are given your white garment, covered by the cross. And from the altar comes and flows the very body and blood of Jesus, your Savior, for you, for the forgiveness of your sins, where you are fed, nourished, and kept in the one true faith. By the cross, by the Holy Spirit who points to the cross, He loosens your stiff necks, changes you, fixes you, neck, head, eyes upon Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, upon Jesus the sacrifice of God for the forgiveness of your sins. So whatever persecution comes, whatever hatred you endure, whatever stones are cast at you and upon you, whatever death finally befalls you, whatever happens that might try to silence the truth of the Word of God, stand beneath the altar beneath the cross, in Christ, for He is for you. Stand beneath the great Amen as He bleeds, suffers, and dies for you, and prays, Father, forgive them. Stand beneath the Amen of the Father as He raises His Son back to life. Stand on the amen of those promises for you, delivered as you are given your white garment and told to rest. Rest in the amen of God as He promises you that just as Christ was raised from the dead, so too will you be raised. Rest in the truth and say with me, Amen.